Hello, welcome to the Really Coding channel. My name is Jay, and this is the first installment of a series of tutorials on Cookie Cutter Django. If you're not familiar with Cookie Cutter Django, it is a starter package for Django projects. It is Django, but it is a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so let's look at it. Uh, in the traditional method of, uh, and we have ChatGPT open here, uh, the traditional method of starting a Django project, you would, um, you would pip install you would typically start a virtual environment with virtual env and then you would install django uh pip install and then you would pip install anything else you needed uh, you would start your project cdn and then you'd use the uh you know you'd migrate make migrations uh just create super user and then you would run the local django development server that's all fine and dandy uh, a lot of people a lot of django developers know how to do that if you're not familiar with cookie cutter Django, it actually uh, takes this up a notch. It makes it to where it cuts out the startup of an application. We can look at the repo right here. It'll be linked in the docs or in the uh, the description below the video if you want to check that out. Uh, and it's updating constantly. It's there's always a new release coming out with with this package, and it's it's amazing. Um, just looking real quick at the features, uh, you get right now it's uh, Django 4.2 works with Py Python 3.12. Renders projects with 100% starting test coverage. Uh, it, it has Bootstrap 5 uh, currently installed. 12-factor base settings via Django in environment. And if you don't know what that is, it's just a uh, really nice, secure, um, proper way to really do any software development project. And it's great that this uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't know how to do these things out of the gate. So it's really cool that the, that this comes with a package it's already set up and the worst you can do is, is break it so you don't have to worry about uh, putting it together and as you use cookie cutter django you will start to learn a lot of these ideas and these things that are implemented here you'll start to understand them and then you can carry them on into your raw django projects if you ever go back i've been using this package for a couple of years now and i rarely ever do i ever spin up a django application without it because it's just it's easy it's fast um, the way this works, uh, let's go, finish going through, through this real quick. Optimized development and production settings, register, registration via Django all auth. It's already included and installed and set up correctly. It comes with a custom user model ready to go. Uh, that was a bit of a uh, gotcha for me uh, when I first started learning Django was the custom user model. I ran into several instances where I needed one, didn't know what it was, all that, et cetera, et cetera, extending uh, the, the base user model. Uh, this package was one of the, one of the, the things that kind of about the noise uh, one of the things that kind of let that sink in for me optional basic a asgi setup for web sockets i have used web sockets in in this package before and it is uh pretty much just ready to go you know it's really great optional custom static built a uh, build using gulp or webpack now i personally don't use any of uh, these javascript services i just i, ju I just go straight into the templating uh, myself uh if, you know but if you if you're into that type of thing and there's a couple of other options if i'm not mistaken other than Gulp and Webpack that can be used. I think there's a Django templates option. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd have to look at it. We'll initialize a project either in this video or, or the next video. Uh, send e uh, emails via any mail of uh, using Mailgun by default or a Amazon SES if AWS is selected cloud provider, uh, but switchable. I personally use uh, SendGrid for my emails. Media storage using Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage, Azure Storage or uh, Nginx. Docker support using Docker Compose for development and production, uh, traffic and Let's Encrypt support. This is so invaluable. Traffic is basically a load balancer. It's a, it's a router. It, 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 it handles your URLs. Uh, it, you know, it does Let's Encrypt automatically. If you've ever launched a project without all of this, these tools and these, this help, you end up having to do Let's Encrypt to get your SSL certificate sorted out on the live server. Uh, as long as you've got your project set up correctly, when you go to deploy, traffic will actually handle that for you. It's really nice. It's set up really well. This is actually one that I'm still um, I'm very I'm very new with traffic, so I'm not going to be able to provide a whole lot of information on it. But I can uh, show you some of the finer points. Uh, proc file for deploying uh, to Heroku. I don't use Heroku myself. I'm, I I deploy on Digital Oceans. Instructions for deploying to Python anywhere. Again, that's not something that I'll probably be covering. Run tests with unit test or pytest. Customizable Postgres. Uh, as, uh, Postgres. As, uh, Postgres. 
how do you even say that when it's when it's wrote that way? Uh, customizable Postgres, Postgres version. Default integration with pre-commit for identifying simple issues before submission to code review. Um, and in fact, they just recently updated the way that the, the pre-commit runs. They they went from using a, a couple of sets of, of pre-commit options to uh, it's much more intricate and uh, well, some might say convoluted. I actually just finished a project or I, I decided to pre-commit a project that I've been working on way too long before, before committing it. Uh, anyways, but uh, it ended up with <laughs> over 200 errors. It took me about eight hours to dig through them all and get everything sorted out. But that's on me. You're supposed to, you know, do a little bit, push and or, or commit and let pre-commit do its thing. Um, but yeah, it was, it's it's really great though because it's as annoying as that is, you know that your code is good at the end. All you got to do is is do all, fix all the errors that it tells you, the ones that it doesn't fix itself, and then make sure that the project still works which you'd be surprised sometimes it does it, you know you can't break things by by fixing them um, and then you know once once the project's working the commit goes through you're good to go you have great code base everything's solid and and you just uh, you, you know you're off to the races you can you can launch it so that's that's essentially Django cookie cutter or cookie cutter Django um, what is cookie cutter Cook, cookie cutter is a um, and I've actually made a little note here. Cookie Cutter is a handy tool that simplifies the process of starting new projects by generating project structures for reusable templates. It's like a blueprint uh, for your project, providing a predefined structure and files based on your requirements. With Cookie Cutter, you can quickly create consistent and well-organized project layouts without having to start from scratch every time. Whether you're starting a new Django project, a Django web application, building a Python package, or creating documentation, Cookie Cutter helps you get up and running with minimal effort. Cookie Cutter Django is a project template for Django web applications. Um, so that's that's essentially what it is. If you go to cookiecutter.io, uh, which is also in the description below, you will find a website that has the um, has project templates for Swift, React, Python, Postgres, Kotlin, Golang, Flask, Fast API, Django. Cookie Cutter itself is a Python package, but it is more than it's not a Python. It's not just for Python. Uh, you can use it to to template projects for all of these. They've got a ton of of projects here on the website that you can download and get started with. You can also find a ton of Cookie Cutter projects out in the wild on GitHub. Cookie Cutter Django comes is uses the Cookie Cutter project templating system, and uh, you can see some of those. Uh, some of those characteristics, like for instance, right here, you have this slug, cookiecutter.project slug. This is uh, one one slug that uh, Cookie Cutter is going to use to, like, whenever you go to set up a Cookie Cutter project, it will you'll, it'll ask you for the project slug. You give it to it, and then your project gets generated with uh, this being that slug at that point. So this is like the raw uh, folder. This repo, let me make sure I've got it in my notes, uh, is uh, going to also be in the description below. I haven't already said that for you to check out and this is essentially the project but with the cookie cutter templating tokens not filled out yet this is this is essentially what you'll get with the project so um yeah i mean that's that's essentially what cookie cutter django is And we can look at some benefits of it. Uh, we've got a rapid project set up, obviously. I mean, it, it's very quick. It's a, it's a very quick thing to uh, start up a, a, a cookie cutter Django project. It takes just a few few seconds. It, it takes no, uh, you, it will, I'll show you. It walks you through all of the, the setup process. Um, it's con a consistency. Cookie cutter enforces a standardized project layout, ensuring um, consistency across different projects and teams, time saving without, uh, with cookie cutter developers can start working on the application login right away without worrying about boilerplate code customization. Cookie cutter templates can be customized to fit specific project requirements, allowing developers to tailor it, the project structure and dependencies. Uh, community driven cookie cutter templates are often maintained by the community, providing access to wide range of templates from, uh, different types of projects. Um, so, you know, I I have played with Cookie Cutter as a templating uh, system myself, but I have not managed to create anything as nice as what uh, Daniel Greenfeld. Let's go check the name here. We got to give our attributions, right? We've got to we've got to check out. Um, this was made by a person. Let's see if I can find his name here. Sorry, I was not prepared. I believe it's Daniel. Yeah, Daniel Greenfield. Um, is is the uh, 
it's attributed to him. I'm, I, I would imagine he made it. It's probably him right here. Uh, but it has, that's not, um, it has 396 contributors. It's 200 people on its watch list. It's been forked 2,800 times. It's got 11.5 stars. Uh, it's... It's kind of a big deal. You can also find another, another flavor of it if we look for Gene Zombie uh, Wagtail Cookie Cutter, which is using an older version of Cookie Cutter Django. But uh, this one has Wagtail set up already as well, so it's it's the same process. You you run Cookie Cutter on it, and then it installs your project. Um, uh, and you get Wagtail. However, it's actually really easy to install Wagtail into an existing application or into the most the latest version of Cookie Cutter Django from the main repo. So, you know, I've, I've used this one quite a bit, but these days I typically just go in and, and install Wagtail myself. So it's really up to you. There's probably a ton of other versions um, of that as well. Cookie Cutter Django Wagtail. Looks like there's another one there. So you're going to find a lot of different um, versions, but the main repo is right here. And they have put a lot of time, effort, and energy into making the best possible boilerplate. And the crazy thing is it's free. I mean, you know, it's free. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe we should like, give some stars or some likes or whatever, but um, it's, it's just a really great project. It's open source, and it will uh, start, I mean, it'll, it'll speed run your, your, your project initiation. So highly recommend it. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to initialize a project, and we'll get started from there. See you then.